have you guys ever had like a dream where you go to punch somebody and like your punch is just super slow and just doesn't land? No, but I've had dreams where I've seen people fall off backwards on stairs and then land at the bottom on top of their heads and their heads explode. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> your dice ready because we are back to another session of casual mcquest masters casual mcquest masters what the fuck all right i got my dice <laughs> okay uh They're right here yeah <laughs> they are <laughs> i thought you oh we were starting i thought you were just telling us. <laughs> no that that's fucking fair it sounds like fully you... work at its finest it, it, it reminds me of like uh, that fucking gif I see where the lady at a liquor store climbs up the shelf to grab something and just dumps the entire <laughs> section oh, of alcohol no. on the ground. That's what it sounded like with your dice, dice, your dice, uh, uh, dice for drawer. Half a I have a, a, a drawer full of dice. Dice rummaging. Ooh, ooh, that kind of ASMR would freak me the fuck out, man. I, uh, I don't know. Oh, one of someone like rolling dice, maybe, or like. It, it just sounds like you're running, like, a toothbrush, the back of a toothbrush across your teeth. Ooh. Sounds like chiclets. The fuck are chiclets? The gums? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's like you're just, because, yeah, and you're just, like, holding them in, like, a bowl, and you're just shaking it around. What are those little, mm. uh, like, dice. like, chocolate candies? Like, little balls? Ricolas? Maltesers? No. Not smaller than Maltesers. They're, like, they're candy-coated. They're smaller than M&Ms, and they're round. I thought those were chiclets. Uh, Skittles? Fuck. Tic Tac. Nerds? Hold on, I'm gonna look this up on my phone because I can't do it on my computer. I have my I keyboard think Nick covered. Nick is on by the right way. track here. I think I think it's nerds. No, a little bit bigger than nerds, and they're chocolate on the inside. Wait, what did you say before I've... that? My keyboard's covered. Oh, Tic-tacs. okay. Oh. <laughs> do you know Tic Tacs are uh, manufactured in Cork, Ireland? No, six. I didn't know that. Six. Oh. Six. Oh. Oh, those. Yeah. I feel like uh, those are like in the same as uh, those candies where it's a stick of chalk that you lick and you dip into, like, Kool-Aid powder. Are you talking bad about fucking lick sticks Yeah, I am, actually. Are we just going to talk about candy? On- There's nothing going on with candy today. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, you can that's start Nick. over. That's uh, Nick. Uh, no, I'm keeping this shit. This is oh, fucking right. great. That's Nick, who uh, usually plays, uh... Well, I guess... Vol. Yeah, I was going to say. That, Vol that, that, Nightwalker that. Val Nugoni, a Goliath. And there's Brandon... Thresher. Ma- Magdor Band Iron, uh, youngest of the Band Iron family. The Steelers can suck my dick. And uh, this is Tyler who plays as Roger typically. I don't have a fun quote, so I'm gonna have to say sorry across from this moat. Uh, anyways, Glenn is out. <laughs> Are you gonna nix that? <laughs> or maybe just Knox it? Oh, wait, you're right. <laughs> because I'm not Roger anymore. I'm playing as Knox. Ain't imagine, I? imagine forgetting all of your character progression. Is this what oh, it feels like it's... starting a new game? <laughs> <laughs> or it's when they do Days of Future Past. You know, like every day for Knox is like, uh, was it forty two or forty first dates or something like that for him? He just <laughs> wakes up with, uh, with uh, Adam Sandler. Yeah, you got to roll a d twenty to see if you remember. Himself. <laughs> like I'd. I'd imagine, like, uh, it would be a cool effect where you roll a d20, like you said, but it's based off of a 5%, uh, like, how much of the previous day you actually remember. Like, if you roll a nat 20, you remember everything, but if you roll a nat 1, you remember 5% of what happened that day. I woke up and took a piss. (laughs) That's about all I remember. I remember breathing. Uh, yeah, Glenn is out, uh, for his, uh, four-year wedding anniversary. Congratulations. And so, uh... Yay, Glenn! We we just kind of showed up out of instinct to uh, perform, you know, laboriously to you guys, but we realized, uh, well, we don't have a Dieb, so we decided that we're gonna actually take over the beach to Leviathan and just th- turn that into our fortress to uh, defeat Lord Never Ember, and then just maybe slowly take over the Sword Coast, or we just talk about a bunch of shit. Episode six point five. <laughs> this is a fucking- Kingdom Hearts style. Oh, I was going to say Lion King, but sure, yes. Kingdom Hearts are out. <laughs> it's kind of depressing that it's kind of true, actually. Oh. By death. What? Well, Knox is birthed through the death of Roger. Birthed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't fucking know. 
I feel I need like more alcohol. Roger is just yeah, I'm gonna say Roger's kind of like on the the back burner now, so it would be more birth by sleep. Do you think Knox would ever have uh, split personality issues? For sure. Like, I mean, Roger, there was... like, let me out. I want to play now. Do you remember that scene where I very rudely, I might add, uh, poured a glass of uh, mead on full? Uh, do you remember? I like I switched from being Knox to uh, blue for a second. Which caused Glenn to have a table just kind of turn around as this petite half elf just drops his voice, going, "Why didn't you drink the mead, boy?" Uh, uh, yeah, uh, he def or they, since I gotta learn on distinguishing the lack of pronouns, or is it combination? It, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's the thing. It's your character. Me. You get to choose. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I mean, it it is my character. It just feels weird because it feels like thin ice. Whenever I'm, like, trying to deal with something. Or not even deal, just, like, trying to process how that would work. Because, you know, with uh, pronouns nowadays, people are starting to be able to choose a little bit more, you know, that suits them, that is right. them. But it feels rude that I'm like, hey, I get to choose this pronoun, I get to choose that pronoun. It's like, it just... Well, again, so that's the idea of gender fluidity. There are people who decide on a daily basis what they're feeling like or who they're feeling like. So I don't think it's the nice, especially because it's a character and you're not doing it out of like, uh, you know, from a place of uh, spite, uh, malice or spite. Yeah, you're you're you've got a character you're trying to build it and you're just trying to understand your own character. So I don't think you'd have to worry too much about it, really. So I shouldn't say uh, like I identify as Calamity Ganon. That way I'm. Full I mean, of you can. Uh, no, no. <laughs> 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 I got you I mean, last, you so if it's, it's a it's bad fine. joke, you <laughs> laughed at it. I'm just saying. You can. I think okay. I think as long as you're not like 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 Nick said, you're not flaunting it, it's just who Knox is. Like that is right. Knox. And I think the importance uh the audio listeners didn't hear this, so I'll say here, uh I'm actually because I realize much like a changeling, my depiction of what Knox slash Roger is is constantly changing. But I feel like they should have a divergent po- persona or you know a main persona to focus on that is pleasing and being default main number three just seemed like it was boring as shit right and, and so and i got i was gonna say and i mean the big important thing is for you to have fun too as a player you know whether roger thinks it's boring or not i'm sure you were like oh this is kind of lame you know you want to add some diversity some 3dness to your character well, the idea was I try to blend in with everybody else so nobody suspicious comes up to me, and within ten minutes, someone suspicious comes up to me. It's like, well, that plan did not work. Hello, Algira. And so I just like she's... I realized like she's good, and obviously standing next to a giant Goliath doesn't help my case either. Admittedly. Uh so that being said, I am trying to get an art commission done by a uh, pretty talented artist. I I want to wait on like names and. Once it, until it's completed, that way, you know, something happens, and they back up. But uh, by doing that, that way I can visualize them a little bit better by seeing it in a picture and sticking to it instead of saying, hey, I'm this new skin today, which technically I think right. I've done almost every single episode after the second one. And I don't think it's been a problem either. I think having a changeling has brought some interesting dynamics to everything, too. I mean, the whole scene at the Fallen Tower with blue vol and all of that like that yeah. progressed you guys significantly as a relationship also question for you brandon yeah uh on audacity did you switch it from your microphone to voice meter uh cable input but yes yeah okay, okay. 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 <laughs> just sorry i just wanted to make sure brandon i actually have it running to... underneath you i'm watching he, he's improving himself uh audibly with the power of virtual cabling which some people say is the devil but i like it I mean, it is to get it set up and understanding it if you're not well versed with um, physical like mixers, um, because you don't have like a physical idea of like a mental image of how things work, and you're doing everything like uh, like with uh, virtual cables and stuff. It is a difficult concept to grasp well, initially. I'm not used to three channel mixers. I normally use uh, 42 channels. Ah, um, okay. So no, for real. Both, you are a man of culture. <laughs> Both of my colleges and the church that I mixed for had like twenty-eight to fifty-two channel mixers. So they had the the mega radio station board essentially. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's this thing's like four feet long. Uh, two I thought rows. it was the piano. No, this is the tuner, my friend. It is nice though to have 
your fingers on the keys to be able to just adjust the volume on the fly. Right, right. That's fair. Uh, I remember in the first ten minutes of the episode, Brandon, you decided to give us your... And I, I wish there was Western music or something for it. You gave us your entire backstory accidentally. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I had just gotten done listening to some Critical Role, where their first, like, episode zero is their full backstories of their characters. I was like, fuck, that sounds cool. I want to write that for mine. Hell yeah. So, I respect that. Uh, I, I mean, I agree with Glenn's decision to not have an episode zero. That way the players can take it in for the most part. I think it is important, though, that we talked about, like, what we looked like and whatnot, just to build the base for it. But it was funny, he asked for that, and you just kind of like, <laughs> here's my entire backstory. I even went into his fucking voice for it, too. <laughs> yeah, you did. It, it was impressive. So, now that we technically know, how does it feel knowing that you are playing a, uh, a dwarf with that kind of story? And are you a hill dwarf? I am a hill dwarf from uh, Gauntilgrim. Hey, you said it right on the first time. You know, I'm so proud it, of you. It's so, it's weird. Uh, you know, I spelled Magdor's name wrong for a long time, because I don't even know where I came up with the name for it. It just, I think I did like a uh, generator, and I saw Mag and Dor, and I was like, oh, that'd be a good one. And I kept spelling <laughs> it D-O-R-H, and it's D-O-H-R. Hmm, Magdoru. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy playing him. It's definitely a challenge to be overly talkative because me as a person like i talk a lot when i drink but not i know normally and so like i either have to be drunk or in character sometimes both i mean both is nice i would be in the same boat if it wasn't for the fact that we record right before i leave for work oh man i would i would like well i say that but the casual master quest supervisor that is, uh, Nikhil Chody Mello would, uh, probably remind me I'm no longer allowed to drink, uh, liquor on the podcast after my Everclear for, episode. For CQ, I might allow you one beer. Have you listened to any a of beer? our Super Goon Squad? Yes. No, I haven't. No. We have no, a few episodes the... where Tyler and I have both drank a little too much. I'm pretty sure we <laughs> ended one early because neither of us could handle it. <laughs> I, I became completely incoherent, uh, one episode, and I upset my wife so much. Oh, man. I'll have to, I, I still so, have all of the uh, files. I'll have to see if I can find out which one it is. What gave you your inspiration for the uh, having the arm? You know, honestly, I don't remember. Uh, I think it came from the backstory itself. So when I was writing the backstory, I was like, well, obviously I want him to have to leave. And I didn't know it was Gauntlegrim at the time. Like, it literally said in the email, Plot City. Um, and, uh, oh, God, my monitors just died. Scared the shit out of me. Um, oh, don't worry, we're still he here. Yeah, they just went to sleep. Them. Yeah. Are you making fun of somebody else that no, freaked out? No, it that literally is... just happened. My heart stopped. Oh. Uh, I wasn't referring to you. I was referring to Nick. We had uh, a certain person of the team uh, not touch his keyboard so long that his monitors went to sleep, and he mm -hmm. thought he lost power or something like that. That was my first thought, because we actually had a power outage yesterday because of the storms. But, uh, um, yeah, the storms are but yeah, so I wrote it as Plot City, and obviously he was like, oh, well, we're doing it in Faerun. Use Gauntlegrim, and I was like, "All right, cool." Um, but I, I had to come up with a reason for him to leave the city, and I was like, "Well, Gauntlegrim has a uh, new ruler after all of the shit that's gone down." Um, and uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut into the speech. Sorry, uh, just since uh, Brandon's testing out voice sorry. meter banana, it might be my fuck. I mean, do whatever the fuck. This is the who, who the fuck cares episode. Uh. I'm hearing popping noise whenever you talk. I'm hearing it from you guys, too. I thought it was just Discord. Do we want to try switching oh, okay. a region real quick? Yep. I will switch over to the west. Oh. La, 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 la. Oh. Do we need a clap? Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> Hell Nick yeah. West Coast, best coast. Um, okay. So I'm going to keep talking. If you hear it, let me know. But uh, So I had to come up with a reason for him to leave Gauntlegrim, and under the new ruler of the king, he was going to have a competition to see who the new royal family was for blacksmiths there and um obviously magdor was put up for his family and he lost and so it's like well you know they're not just going to kick him out dwarves are ruthless so they're going to cut off his main smithing arm and send him out so is this the king of gontelgrim uh i believe so i don't know if his title is actually king let me let me find out the the leader of gontelgrim okay i mean either way but yeah i was on the question i was like it's weird that they would have a smithing contest of sorts, you know, and 
being a blacksmith, I can imagine being a very important role in Gonthlegrim, but the joke is, lol, you lose your arm if you lose. And it's like, why don't you just shame him for like two weeks so he can keep doing his job for you? And it's weird. You know, the, the king just doesn't put up with slackers. It's a hundred or nothing. And so the Steel Ore family has If you're not first, weapons. you're last. Yeah. Ah, good old uh, prehistoric Amazon. I like it. And so, uh, obviously, he wasn't exiled. That was just his punishment was to lose his arm. And, you know, it, it was in the paperwork when you signed up for the competition that there would be that type of punishment. But uh, he wasn't and exiled. Signed up but for that anyways? Nice. Yeah, he That's wanted ballsy. to prove it to his family. And uh, Magdor wasn't religious starting out. But uh, after the incidents, he was sitting there and a couple weeks had passed and his right he's left-handed, so his right arm just wasn't cutting it. And uh, so he I decided mean, it did after the contest, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and so he decided to finally start praying, and through his family, he found a book to Moradin, the forge god, um, and... The, the king dwarf version? Yeah. And uh, prayed to him, and Moradin said, You are... Or, let me restart that. Magdor says, no. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. And, of course, uh, Morden was like, da, 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 teach you to, to build a arm. Yeah, and Magdor was like, what the fuck? And, uh, cause he's probably drunk at this point. And, uh. And I'll make you a cleric just because. Yeah, basically that's what he says. He says, you follow me, follow my teachings, and I will grant you the, <laughs> uh, knowledge to rebuild <laughs> dwarven society and your arm. I I'm glad you enjoyed that one, Dick. I will travel across the land, smithing and fucking healing. Da 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 da. <laughs> and I'm so, sorry, it's so close to Pokemon. Like anything Pokemon related will just like get my gas going. Dealing. Ethereum. Electrum. Or, yeah, Ethereum. Ethereum. Sorry. Oh, fuck. Um. <laughs> it's okay. Your Christmas and eight. <laughs> um. And so he ended up. He he doesn't like the cold. So we'll see how this goes in the next couple episodes. So his options were to go north or south, so he headed south, and uh, I'm going to assume you guys were on a job, and, you know, dwarves and goliaths, sorry, drawers and goliaths are uh, good friends. Fuck <laughs> me. Uh, Voice the text for that one, uh, for the audio listeners, if there's ever one. I thought I told Nick that goliaths and dwarves are friendly to each other, but because I used voice to text and I wasn't paying attention, I told him that goliaths are very friendly with, uh, dwar uh dwarves. Like, dwarves. to a, a dresser. <laughs> yeah. Close enough, right? The woodwork on and, this is meticulate. And so I'm going to assume that I heard you guys doing one of your jobs and just kind of like, oh, that's a big man, and walked up to Vol and just kind of introduced myself and said, what are you up to here? And on the job, yeah, working a job, dwarf. Uh, is it pay? I need, I need Enough. A, I need a place to sleep tonight. Uh, you looking for some help? Well, let's see how you prove yourself on this one. Why don't you join us? And then, uh, and then that's where it started. Incredibly tr trusting for plot convenience. I, I'm so proud of Vol. <laughs> <laughs> Ro like I imagine Roger, like Spider-Man, clinging to under one of the wagons, like staring at the dwarf, <laughs> ready to a strike. <sighs> <laughs> hiding in the shade but he has like shit and dexterity so he does that and immediately just drops he's on his back with his hands and like legs still like in the cling position oh you won't be kill that one no no he's with me don't mind him too much and that's it the rest is history as they say <laughs> i was gonna say I, are we doing like tales of uh tales, <laughs> tales of the casual quest masters hey that's just uh, my story you know i'm sticking to it so you're a uh, forge cleric specifically, right? Yeah. Yep. I don't so, even know how. So I what's a, I don't even know what the fuck a forge cleric is. I'll be what? honest, because all of this is still new to me, and I haven't bothered looking it up. So a forge cleric, uh, it's just a cleric with a specialty in blacksmithing. I guess. Sorry. Um, okay. Not really a specialty, but they're not as holy as regular clerics. They get their blessings, obviously, from forge gods and the dwarven gods and uh you know they're pretty much just clerics that can do blacksmithing that's about it it reminds me of a uh a nature paladin and i i know there's probably a more specific term like you know when you think of paladins you think of like using divine light and all that stuff but then there's nature paladins who call upon the power of plants and whatnot to assist them and you know okay. using like the goddess melora so yeah like a forged dwarf it just feels kind of like a 
adjacent to the traditional cleric, and it's pretty cool. A lot and of honestly, my sorry, go I was gonna say a lot of my specialties as we move along, and I'm I'm sure you guys have noticed now is uh, enchanting weapons and creating weapons, uh, assisting yes. with support healing. Ooh, yeah. right. You know, you know, you know what that reminds me of. Um, and we don't really see this character in action, but has anybody played Dark Souls Three here? No. So in Dark Souls Three, uh, in like the main like area, like where you get to do all your upgrades and buy shit, um, uh, because the main currency in the game is souls, and there is this one like big, really? as Tyler would describe it, like a big beefcake, like beef daddy, just in the back, just going away, hammering Careful, at like Nick, a sword. That's sexual. And and he's just, but he's just very like he seems like a priest almost like a kind of semi-priest he'll, he'll wish you well godspeed you know whatever like standard kind of like holy right. sayings and then he'll take all the souls that you collect and upgrade your weapons yeah sounds about right yeah so um it's kind of cool i posted kinda that kinda comic frustrating. sorry i was just gonna say it's i think it's frustrating for me who doesn't have any kind of weaponry or armor to have a forge <laughs> cleric in the party we saw that I scene tried. where it's like yeah it's like can i enchant his I don't know, his fucking underwear at this point, his kazoo, and it's like, I got nothing, dude, I'm sorry. It's so, like, it makes sense, dwarves and goliaths being close friends to each other, I think uh, it, it gives a good support dynamic for uh, Magdor and Vol. I'll help you out yeah, with Yeah, I think especially, things. yeah, when, um, well, I think once our powers flesh out a little bit more, especially because, uh, like, formation will be me, or at least Vol on the front line. Uh, Magdor, like, kind of in between the front and the back, and then uh, Nox sitting in the back. So you wouldn't need to be as hands-on as we are right now. Like, I would imagine maybe, like, level 10, level 12, you'll have... Um, obvi- uh, like, I don't know what you're going to do with your character, but you'll have ways I'll to be put, dead. Like, create some real. distance. <laughs> I don't um, expect this yeah. character to get past level 5. <laughs> I think... Uh, or, like, depending on, uh, you know... Uh, the, the, I think we can speculate at least or mention and not go into details, but the multi-class option presented in whatever way will give you some proficiencies in different tools where at least some of the blessings could be useful. Or, sure. you know... I mean, we all know that I saw the Raven Queen last episode, so, I, I mean, wait, wait, what am I going to do? Make a pact with her? You yeah. might have a dagger I can plus one for you. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I could use the obsidian dagger that is... You know, fostering this potential energy I could call upon if I sell my soul to it. Oof. <coughs> but, yeah. <laughs> oh, that comic, I, I just wanted to say. Did you get to see that comic that I posted earlier on the Casual Master Quest Discord? If you'd like an invite. Okay, I was going to say, which one? Um, it, it's on a public one, I'm pretty yep, sure. Yep, I, I was worried you were going to talk about like a different comic from uh, your channel, which would be... Uh, no. Hmm... Yeah. No, no, it's the one I posted on the uh, Casual Master Quest of the guy who's injured, and someone brings him and says, you gotta help, and it's just this blacksmith out of forge that, I'll see what I can do, and then, you know, he goes down and like, how you feel? And, and he turned the guy into a sword. He's like, I guess I can't complain. <laughs> forge clerics. Yeah. Healed. <laughs> forge it was just too clerics, perfect. You. But yeah, Magdor's fun so far. It's like, it's like forge clerics are like healers, but they're just so obsessed and, like, metal turns them on and weapons or they just get a hard on for it and then it's like shit i gotta heal but i don't know what to do i know i'll give you the most perfect form any human or being can ever possess and take on and turns them into a sword oh i would do that i would <laughs> do that for you an curse. instant fool um and i, I did want to i lose my arm and you just give me a blade for <laughs> you know dual wielding <laughs> i imagine you with a chainsaw for some reason bull like oh i'm not gonna stealth for this one <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, there's something I wanted. The door's I, I locked. Really not for long. Retcon. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> wanted to I'm explain so, uh, a little bit. So when we were at the bar in the last episode, and the yeah. uh, um, barkeep, bartender, the guy who brought us the alcohol, he mentioned uh, Gontelgrim. Uh, I, I kind of rushed the reaction, but Magdor's reaction to that was half of oh shit, I have to go talk to this other dwarf to pick up my stuff, and I really don't want to talk about what happened there. And so it just right, kind of came right. off as like, oh, I gotta go. And then he left. I'm. Would you say losing that contest was probably one of the lowest highlights of your life then? At that oh point? yeah, Mag- like Magdor didn't shame. even drink until he lost. No, no, I'm just kidding. He's a dwarf, so he drank all the time. <laughs> he, he had a okay, stein oof. coming out of the womb. Really trying to scare me for Halloween. All right. oh. yeah, um, spooky. But no, he definitely, I mean, from when you came in and talked about, uh, Magdor even stated, like, 
I'm not sure I can even forge anymore, you know, or I don't know how good I'm going to be. Like, he lost his arm, he lost all of his confidence and his smithing ability. It, it was a really low point for him, and that's why, you know, he turned to religion for him. I mean, honestly, from a natural standpoint, when you think about it, it makes sense because people do that in real life, too. And it, it's made them better people by turning to religion. Uh, I'm trying to think about mine, but full. Yeah. You, you, your previous character that you got to play as was a uh, a bard, or is a bard right now. Is a bard. Okay, Tyler, you're the DM. Are you? Is there something you're not telling me? Tell me that I was a bard? Bard no more. I mean, uh, shout out to uh, the D&D podcast Guild, Guild Fellows, where it's a person who is... Uh, thinks she is a halfling cleric and not halfling a half elf cleric but it turns out she was actually tricked and she's really a tiefling warlock so she's like oh i'm gonna use my cleric spell eldritch blast and it's like (laughs) 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 so i mean the cards are that's something that that's something that would have happened to me because that was my first character first time playing DD. and if you're like here we we made this for you you're a bard and i'm like all right, I'm going to attack with my longsword and use Divine Smite. What? <laughs> the power of music compels you. <laughs> <laughs> you just smite him by beating him with a mandolin or some shit. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Yeah, you were asking me, Tyler. Uh, So, you play a bard, and what made you want to switch from playing what you... You describe yourself as the person that loves being a support type of uh, role. What made you decide to go for something a little bit more aggressive damage dealing well it's not so much that i love playing support like i enjoy playing support and when i was looking through everything bards are probably some of the more easier ones to get into i think outside of your standard fighter because of how many options you have and then i just happened to pick because i was thinking more of the narrative when i when i first made the bard his name's brahm and i'm like oh you know it'd be really cool like interracial shit is cool so let's make him a half elf and then we'll just make him a bard and he wanders around cast spells sometimes slashes things and it's like oh look at this you created one of the most optimal like characters <laughs> in the entire fucking 5e game and i'm like oops all oh, dps shit. <laughs> um and then with with um with this character with vol i uh was looking i started off by looking through classes and I'm like, hmm, Ranger seems kind of cool because Ranger reminds me of Aragorn. Because Aragorn was in the movies described and the books described as a Ranger. And yeah. then I'm like, what is, so in 5e, what does that entail? I look through it, I'm like, it'd be really cool to be a Ranger, but let's play, let's pick a weird race this time. Um, or at least like a not super great matchup when we're looking at being optimal. And Goliath was like, yeah, there's a guy, same, same uh, guy that you shared with me from my, when we were working through my bard uh, character at the start with the giant in the playground has a fantastic guide for rangers as well and it's like yeah a goliath is not great unless you're gonna go for a strength ranger but even then it's not super great and i'm like okay but is this big hulking man who's trying to be like kind of stealthy uh but then i added a background in and the background uh, being that the worst. um Fole's character was designed like he's he used to be a he'd patrol like the outskirts of his village or like the areas like that you know his tribe hunts in and uh you know collects harvests and you know bades in or whatever and so he just did the the night patrols that's how he got the title nightwalker um because uh, the nicknames are given as a sign of accomplishment so i really decided in whatever accomplishment i'm like oh he's probably hunted or you know kept off an attack in the middle of the night or whatever so just go with that nightwalker seems cool i just went through a name generator and came up with that hell yeah um so yeah, I just want to do something a little bit off kilter, uh, not like still like super like un, um, un like Optimal. disharmonic or unharmonic. Yeah, like I just want to do something that would would cause some kind of tension with the matchup, but would provide like an interesting multi class opportunity. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of like why I made a Goliath Ranger. And how do you feel you've been? Well, no, I don't want to do like a review on your character like that. Uh, right. How's it feel playing somebody who has to be very stoic and eyes on the the prize kind of thing? It's not me. It's strange. It's very hard. Like I think the most full has spoken was the last episode, and my only excuse for that is the fact that he was probably drinking and getting ready for a new job, and he probably oh. drank a little bit more than usual. That's that's fucking fair. That is um, fair. 
Because Goliath, especially like he's also an older Goliath, mind you. Like Goliaths don't naturally normally reach this age. Yeah, you're like elder the stage at this point. You you survived by sitting, you know, in a uh, well, a city, and not like trying to kill yourself immediately at the first big thing you see. Yeah, uh, yeah, Goliaths, um, and I, I we've had this discussion. I think I've had this discussion with everybody. Uh, but I've been like building the character based off like just doing research that's been there in all the books and all the you know guides and stuff on wh- who Goliaths are, where they come from, and Goliaths are very competitive by nature, um, and they're just very much survival of the fittest. So I'm like, how would a Goliath survive? in a situation where you have all these classes and all these rules and all these distinctions and hierarchies where whereas in a goliath tribe everybody's kind of like you either pitch in or, or you get you the fuck out yeah sounds right. like my household over when i was with grandma right so <laughs> um i feel like i feel like the way i'm playing this character has been very close to like all of your personal shit tyler oh i'm sorry i realized that <laughs> as i said that that, that that puts us one pin closer. Yeah, for those who don't know, I keep giving Nick as a person a lot of shit because it feels like he's role-playing all my family nightmares in one package. And, it, like, initially, it just stressed me the fuck out because it was just like, plus, it doesn't help that my character is calling you dad. <laughs> <laughs> just- yeah, it's it's tr- it, like it's, it's been a challenge, like, I think, um, creatively as acting out the character. Because yeah. it's the first time I'm doing something to this extent. Because the bard, my first character, Brom, I play him as me, right? I, I like to think I'm, like, just a naturally silly, kind of stupid, funny guy. And so, like, it just felt a very, like, natural kind of role. Whereas with Vol, it's very, um, you know, as you said, eyes on the prize, kind of, like, looking forward, man of few words, man who leads by action, leads by example. And I'm not saying that isn't me, but it's not me to that extreme, right? Like, Vol has the emotional range of a teaspoon. No. In most I, cases, Vol has the emotional range of a teaspoon. I would you have say to, a like, fork really... at least. You you get pretty uh, <laughs> angry at times, or a butter I'll t- knife. I'll tell you what. When he gets drunk, though, he's willing to just fucking chuck people. <laughs> I, I think I, 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 love I that. like. I'm I'm so happy. I, like this is honestly, truly, like a Lord of the Rings kind of like uh, parallel universe, but in five E, because we've got Frodo here in the form of like an angsty, anxious. Uh, changeling we've got Gimli and then we've got a mix between uh, I would like to say Aragorn and um, Legolas uh, Legolas yeah just in terms of like features and traits not necessarily in personality um, I feel like Magdor's like pep personality wise can you can draw parallels between Gimli where you like joyous when things are going um, okay when everything's calm but the moment shit goes bad it's like alright down to fucking business let's just fucking kill shit I um I really enjoyed our scene together in the uh, falling tower where that orc bumped into you and was ready for a fight. You know, you could see the connection between dwarf dwarf and uh, Goliath there. Like that guy was ready to go. I was ready to fight for you. You know, I don't care if it's a half fifty fifty. You know, death match right there in the bar. But, yeah, that uh, was uh that was a good scene because um again I think I think I did that well in terms of mm-hmm. how full react because he's on the job. If it was any other night and we would just happen to be drinking there, Vol would have swung, I think. He would have just happily, like, sw- yeah, no, a, a brawl would have started. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I like the. I think that was the most patience we've ever seen Vol exhibit uh, when it's not focused on me. Uh, but it, it was cool because uh, I was waiting for him, like, I, you know, I was like, okay, I'm. I would say I'm 60 feet away. I could probably fireball the shit out of this guy. <laughs> and then you miss and hit me instead. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that is true. Tyler, me. We've talked a bit about our characters, but we have nowhere near the complication or complicated story of Roger Knox. Uh, no and less. I'm name. not gonna lie. The more I spin the web, the more I realize I'm getting myself into a complicated plot hole. Like not a plot hole, as in the actual term, but I'm digging myself in a hole full of plot that I didn't want to be in because the. For Roger, now Knox, well, I always knew from the beginning that this character's name was Knox, their natural name. Like, anybody who could see my character sheet would see that, you know, it said Roger slash Knox. Because, uh, as a changeling, changelings have usually one syllable simple names, and I just like the name Knox. And, uh, I'm I'm guessing it's pretty a, a pretty common name, because, you know, my emo changeling. But my point is, uh, 
I just wanted to build a character that could act like Roger from American Dad. You know, just dress up in stupid outfits and then try to role play, and everybody somehow believes that he is actually that person. Uh, and technically, I I got that. Uh, we learned that uh, despite being a cotton candy blue Goliath, people still believed I was a Goliath. Although the only person that really <laughs> gave the check was a drunk gnome that wanted to have sex, who I now believe to be uh, the big bad evil genius or a big bad evil guy <laughs> now with this campaign in disguise. Ah, oh, would have been so nice. Wait, wait Honestly, a second. We... Was I, I can't remember when we were talking to Lord Never Ember, didn't he say that uh, the guy that we're supposed to be trailing up into uh, Luskin could change? Oh yeah. So if Algira, who never told us why she got uh, suspicious that they were going to be ambushed, if we're going to go into uh, my uh, cork uh, board on the wall with my string and stuff, since we don't know, it could have been anything that, you know, tipped her off. But meanwhile, if she was suspicious that there were signs of, you know, bad things going on, just during that scene, Glenn could have easily put a character that we all saw, you know, was like, oh, it was that guy that was, you know, it was V. Right. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I wanted to be a changeling because I thought it would be fun to do to be able to cast uh, Disguise Self at will. The problem is, though, it turns out I am a min-maxer at heart. And so I had to avoid that because my heart and soul screamed that I became a half-elf because you get all the optimization. As Nick pointed out, he accidentally had all that poten uh, potential fall in his lap. But at the same time, I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to be able to have fun in roleplay, most importantly. Uh... Problem with that though is my changeling side's all that I can use for roleplay because my sorcerer side I have like two slots to do two spells and if I do that any of that for roleplay it means I'm even more useless somehow for combat but uh, I decided I and I realized this I've never played a character that fights in melee distance in D and D ever <laughs> and for some reason I just love being a spellcaster because you know. When you're a melee person, it's like, okay, cool, you get to go in and you get to swing. You get to describe how you fuck them up and that's it. But meanwhile, it's like, I can do 13 different ways of murdering this person with one spell. And some reason, right. I get a kick out of that. But, it, like, I kind of wish I played something a little bit more melee. Like, I, I realize my next character is definitely going to be something like a barbarian or something like that. Something simple, to the point, going to fuck shit up. But I'm having fun with the sorcerer. And the problem with, well, I had as a first-time sorcerer is... You gotta pick, like, where you get all your superpowers at level one. And so I was looking up, I was like, did daddy fuck a dragon? Did, uh, you know, daddy <laughs> fuck, you know, mommy have sex with an angel? And it turns out uh, that uh, I, I really wanted to have some kind of healing capabilities because I realized that if there's one healer on the team and they go down... And technically, rangers have cure wounds, too, as an option if they really wanted to, I believe. Yep. So, like, all of us could heal if we really wanted to, which can be a hair, you know, against Glenn if he's trying to make things difficult. But, uh, and sorcerers naturally aren't, you know, the healing type. I wanted to go for Divine Soul. problem with Divine Soul and being a changeling is a changelings typically only have one god that they follow, and that is the Traveler. Which is pretty much the, the father that walked out, you know, to go get milk. And so I'm following, or I came with some kind of power I knew inside me, I had all along kind of shit, uh, that came from a missing dad, a second missing dad. Like, my, my character is nothing but missing parents at this point, which is kind of <laughs> frustrating. But, uh, so, you know, I, I, I like having the healing powers. It's weird having technically a half cleric on the team when we already have a full cleric. Right. But, it, but thankfully, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, but are you having fun playing him? Yes, once I hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was gonna say, like, I so far I've seen uh, Knox be the the main character of the show, honestly, because because I I disagree. Like, it's face of the party maybe at times, but character uh, like main character of the show. Well, at least right now, because like, look at it in like any kind of like anime where uh, or like any kind of tv show or superhero where it show shows where you have, 28 like, normal japanese students and then there's that one kid <laughs> with spiky purple hair no or at least like the collection of you know you know the kids that are gonna form the team like they'll show the one and then they'll meet two or three as they go along you know that that's the team and then you go on each of the character arcs and we've started with yours right because story-wise there's not so much happening with full 
Um, there's like kind of like slow progression with Magdor, but like right now it's like your main progression, and so I'm excited to see like how that's gonna go on. And then you were also talking about how you feel like you've spun yourself in all of these webs. And with the way you've represented like Knox or Roger in the early stage is he's just a very anxious, paranoid person. And so I feel like it's kind of tied in well as like just being his own over like inflated, imaginative, like worrisome, like inner workings and like reality is completely different from how he's feeling. And that probably has some sort of relation to people who do, you know, who, who, who do like have anxious, uh, like constant anxiety or conscious paranoia, like uh, constant paranoia. Well, my first and main goal when I first made the character is I wanted to make sure I had a long-standing relationship with your character, which, you know, right. we talked about from the beginning. But with how you brought your character up, picking everything, uh, after I said that fact, I realized I got to learn how to play a character, and this is going to be so hard, a character who didn't get to spend time developing bonds with uh, their parents in the, the, right. uh, the early stages of life, which on a psychological level can be very damaging. And yeah. uh, having to learn how to do that, being a teenager still, who doesn't have an identity because they're a changeling, who also, uh, you know, their parents are currently missing, uh, which, you know, hasn't been really represented in the story yet, because Glenn keeps saying they're dead, which is kind of ominous, actually. But, like, the long story short, I, I got adopted by Vol, and uh, my parents were a part of, like, some kind of scheme that we'll talk about at some point, I'm sure. And the parents, you know, left. I'm not sure if you'd call it abandonment yeah. versus, uh, you know, sacrifice to I'd, stop Full from doing whatever he would have done. I like. I think uh, loosely we talked about the fact that uh, Vol was protecting whatever uh, caravan or wagon or sh shop that they were planning. Like the scheme was set up to like attack or uh, steal from, and then Vol was on the job to escort or protect. And then for whatever reason things went uh, wrong, and then Vol's like, "Well, shit. There's a there's a." changeling kid here or like there's a kid here i can't leave this kid uh and that was this was probably in like a time in vol's life where he's just still uh getting accustomed to like a uh, normal society and that he probably saw a lot of the kid uh, like himself in the kid and so he's like shit i guess i'll take you under my wing angry angsty young hero with potential to do greater good or as we slowly move towards a heavier and scarier neutral because <laughs> uh I, I like in my head it's like well if Roger I'm just gonna call it uh call them Knox now just you know since we're gonna because it's like a weird transition stage uh Knox realizes that even though they have inner power coming from the traveler they does it, it doesn't seem like they will ever live up to Vol's high standards uh mostly because of bad dice play or whatnot so it feels like they're willing to do anything to finally get a even more power to try to feel equal uh right. which i don't know how that's gonna work out problem is though it's clearly a mistake like from the player and it's like you don't just make a deal with the devil just so you can you know be proud in your father's eyes for a fucking hour but you know somebody who has that level of you know psychological issues like maybe i will and uh <laughs> Well, it helps that the Raven Queen isn't the devil per se. Thankfully. You could have gone the path of the fiend, and then that would have been a whole other situation. <laughs> Father, I, I work with a demon. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure, hang on, let me pull up uh, Volt's character sheet. I'm pretty sure that I have a trait now. Uh, I kill anybody. Evil awareness. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, beginning at third level, you can use your action expend one ranger spell slot to focus your awareness on the region around you. For one minute per level of the spell slot you expand, you can sense whether the falling types of creatures are present within one mile of you. Aberrations, Celestials, Dragons, Elementals, Fae, Fiends, and Undead. Ooh, I wonder... Well, good thing you were fucking drinking when that whole sh show happened. Uh, <laughs> it, it's weird, though. You were gonna say, though, Brandon. I was gonna say, I wonder if that could lead to... Uh... Bull finding out something is the Raven Queen considered one of those. Uh, the Raven Queen, technically no. Like uh, th when you look at like the lore of the Raven Queen, it's different uh, depending on uh, generations of or editions and whatnot. Like uh, how the Raven Queen uh, came to be. Uh, since it says Queen, I want to refer to her as she. Uh, she doesn't really have like demonic influence or whatnot. She okay. Like the one I imagine was. Uh, she gained power from her followers to try to stop uh, a, a fight between, I believe it was the creator of the elves, the god of the elves, and the god of war, Orcus, I believe. And she got the power to try to stop those two, 
but she was also an elf herself originally. And then mm-hmm. after, uh, like, she gained this power, it was considered, like, heresy, essentially, by both those gods, who you know, made a small truce to pretty much banish her to the Shadowfell, <laughs> where, uh... And she is, um, she's also considered lawful neutral, according to yes. five in, in 5e. In 4e, she was considered okay. unaligned. Uh, so, thank God, she's not considered evil, like, everybody seems to think that, you know, the goddess of death would be, but, I mean, it could, she could be evil in this version. I mean, there, there's um, really nothing stopping. I did want to say one thing, too, before we moved on with uh, uh, Nox being kind of center point right now. I have absolutely no problem with being a secondary character, you know? Like, I don't I want to be Ash Ketchum, though. I like I, being a show horse during scenes, but I don't want to be the guy that stands in front. Like, I don't know if you are watching during your Raven Queen scene of the last episode. Like, I was, like, up on my monitor watching you, like, listening, trying to figure out, like, oh, shit, how's he going to react? Like, oh, fuck. What's that mean? Like, oh, yeah, shit. Last, yeah, last episode now? was fantastic, I think. Yeah. It, no, it was like, I was great, listening like, to myself. I wasn't even playing. I do yeah. remember that part of the episode where I, I kind of got embarrassed because, like, this scene's taken way too long between me and the DM, in my head anyways. I'm holding out Nick and Brandon from playing their characters. We need to move over. And then I, you know, I say, like, all right, it's taking too long. Let's move over to these guys. And then you guys are like, keep talking, please. We, yeah, we want to yeah, see how good. you... good. I mean, the Raven Queen is a goddess. You know, that 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 is like, she can flick her fingers and you turn the dust and kind of shit. And so it's like, being at level three and having that right in front of you, it's like... <laughs> That's a big, oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> don't say anything too stupid that could piss her off. <laughs> Thankfully, Mother is very kind, as it turns out. And it, it, I don't know why I wanted to call her Mother. I think it's the whole Sathroth from Final Fantasy VII situation. <laughs> you know, you know when you said that, what it reminded me of was the Thieves Guild from Skyrim. Uh, the Do whole you... black uh, hand thing? or Yeah, uh, so yeah, not the Thieves Guild, sorry. The, yeah, the... Uh, Dark Brotherhood. The, the, the Dark Brotherhood, yeah. And they have a deity called the Night Mother, which is a corpse in a sarcophagus that they worship, um, mm-hmm. who gives them their um, missions or their contracts. Um, and, and they call they call her mother. And I was like, this is some dark bullshit. I love it. <laughs> it was I, fun to I listen really, to. I wanted to be a shadow sorcerer initially, but I told myself that would be way too emo even for my character. <laughs> but the fact that I managed to somehow traipse my way back into, you know, uh, I, I could potentially be, you know, making a pact with uh, one of the rulers, if you will, of uh, Shadowfell. And it's like, yeah, that's still emo. Shit, I guess I'm all back in. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I got that going on. And it's kind of weird. I have to avoid metagaming too much because when you heard me talk to Lord Never Ember, I'm saying, you know, I want uh, steel and shit for armor. But there's no reason why uh, Roger at the time would want any kind of armor when he knows uh, he couldn't carry it or wear it. Well, yeah. I, well, I mean, we could just work that in as like, oh shit, you just got fucked up. It'd be nice to have armor and you weren't really thinking about whether you'd be able to move around or actually do anything in that armor. I initially was thinking about if I got that, I can make it into a cool, like, ornamental sword uh, to apologize to Vol. Like, make it into mm-hmm. like a Christmas gift or something like that. But I feel like uh, I'd go with that mindset, but the moment I realized I could wear it, I would turn greedy. Right. And, I mean, you did talk to Magdor earlier asking if he could forge stuff like that. That was before the meeting. So you definitely had it on your mind at the time. Right. Uh, just got to be careful with, you know, trying to put the, the cart before the horse, you know. Hey, uh, you know, I'm planning on getting armor, knowing that uh, in maybe, like, five episodes or whatever, I uh, I hit a level where I go into, you know, Hexblade Warlock, so I learn how to use this armor that I just happen to have. What were the chances? Her, her. It, it is kind of metagamey, so I'll have to figure out good lore reason why I initially wanted it in the first place, which... Can I, talk, but, sorry. I can say maybe the Raven Queen suggests it. Well, I tried saying that, you know, and showing out through different parts of uh, the beginning of the episodes where uh, he talks to the dagger. Uh, in essence, he's been, you know, having maybe very small conversations with uh, the Raven Queen or maybe an agent that's been kind of like a, a recruiter, if you will. Like, hey, if you sell your soul to us, we're going to give you this nice, sweet deal uh, with great APR on the car. <laughs> and you know, you're going to get uh, medium armor uh, proficiency. And I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, please uh, tell me more. No interest rate for how many months? And it's like, oh, you're holding up the deck. It's like, yeah, this guy's, uh, you know, Singing sweet nothings to my ear, essentially, like I said, and 
it's fun trying to play this level of a character, but honestly, when you said, Brandon, well, you think I have some kind of complicated backstory, I'm almost jealous because sometimes that kind of story is nice. No, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to say sometimes. It feels like it's always nice. Just having a simple, I'm here to drink, I'm here to, you know, fuck shit up, and I got an arm that says I can wiggle my fingers soon. I think that's cool as shit. I can and clamp right now. Yeah, like it's a lot of the times, like even in movies or books or like TV shows, the characters that you love are sometimes or very often not like main characters. And they're just kind of happen to be like the, the right character in the wrong place at the right time or the right place in the wrong time. They're just kind of there. They're just doing their thing and they just get roped into some shit. Like I, I that's how I kind of see Vol right now. Vol doesn't have like a super complicated backstory. In Goliath culture, he couldn't provide. He got injured when he was younger, and he couldn't keep up with the demands of the tribe that they were asking for him. Because even injured Goliaths are expected to contribute in some way, and so because he couldn't, uh, they he he was exiled, and then he just wound up in Neverwinter, and then wound up, uh, you know, adopting, um, Nox, younger Nox, who was who. I guess didn't have any identities then and then wound up working with Magdor and now they're just doing jobs like it's just you know um, it's the you stuff that happens to them you're collecting gym badges and you got the gym leaders <laughs> which the reason was a five year old changeling <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's good. Like I think having some complexity is nice, but also having characters with the simplicity is good because I see it is like again, it depends on how Glenn spins the story to us and how things progress and develop. You're getting all your complexity out now. Because right. you, you, you've mentioned you are a teenager. You're an angsty teenager. You're getting all of these things out, self-realization, understanding who you are, understanding who you are as an individual, your powers, where they come from. And at some point, uh, Nox should stabilize, I think, like uh, like as a character. And when then that happens, then the complexity will happen to other characters. Either like sobers up mentally or derails so much that i mean he does have to maintain different personas but maybe control it to the point much like his sorcerer powers to where he can slip into that easily without you know letting his emotions uh switch it over uh i was gonna say like an example would be like in game of thrones my favorite character is the hound now the hound oh, does i love the hound yeah the hound does have like maybe a slightly it's not even complicated though you know he got fucked over over a simple fight over a toy i believe with the mountain mm -hmm. and you yeah. know that's how he got that and which led to his uh personality if you will but beyond that he you know is either just following orders and then eventually he's just following what he thinks is right and it's a simple character but i love him over that whereas you know you got fucking <laughs> every other fucking character in game of thrones yeah, because just through that, it's just kind of like that's how is, you know, r right or wrong, he has his own set of like justice and he's not an evil person. He's just doing what he's told for the most part. Um, and you can see like a lot of the decisions that he makes later on in the show. Uh, he has a sense of justice and it's a I feel like it's a fairly morally good sense of justice. He just happens to kill people. <laughs> he's an asshole about his justice, too, at times, I like to think, which is funny. yeah. Like, uh, I, that time where, uh, I think people are going apeshit and then Sansa was trying to run away and people caught up on her and before they were about to do terrible things, Hound was like, chink, chink. And then he, you know, he was like, what are you doing, girl? Dumbass. Come here with, come with me. And, you know, just shit like that. And uh, anyways, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else uh, we should talk about here. Um. Do I talk, do I talk shit about Glenn and how great he's doing as a DM? <laughs> I don't know if that's talking shit. Let me roll a d20 and see it, uh, where this shit talking goes. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I rolled a 7. I don't know Let me roll my means. actual dice. because yeah, That feels like passive aggressive, much. Brandon. Passive aggressive? <laughs> Glenn is one of the best DMs I've had. I rolled a 13. I don't know what that I've means. I've had three um, DMs. He's in the top five. Nice. That's pretty, that's pretty high ranking. Uh, Glenn is the second <laughs> DM I've had, so he ranks in my top two. Okay, um, I was waiting for you to say something very dangerous here. <laughs> He's um, my favorite DM no, I've just, had so far. And I was like, that's passive-aggressive. I'll admit it. <laughs> it's uh, it's different DM cells. I can't really rank uh, between you and Glenn. Um, I would never you fucking ask Canadian. Break, <laughs> you know, you both are good in <laughs> your own way. <laughs> uh, but it's true, though. Like, Glenn is very much a, like, progressive build as you go. But Tyler, you have, like, shit planned out. Like, not that Glenn doesn't have it planned out, but you have things planned out to, like, a little bit, like, more detailed level. I built a Lord of the Rings story for like the maybe like the first half of the plot, and then once I did that, and I, I'm starting to take little things that you guys have done here and there to try to bullshit my way into a more interesting plot, which has worked successfully so far. Like 
I didn't know how the interaction between Ellie and, uh, you know, her druid mother was going to handle out. And, like, I honestly, once I saw that Bertram was always the person that, you know, no nonsense, once he executed Jasper, uh, the knight just, you know, I was like, okay, he's willing to do some dark shit if I give him the option to. Let's give him some more power to see if he accepts it at the risk of becoming an Oathbreaker. And then, no, it makes sense, because you're introducing plot elements and then bringing them back full circle at some point. Um, and so it kind of ties up all the things that we've done together so far. I, I, my favorite thing is, I like the idea of you guys doing whatever the bum fuck you want, but every action you do is an answer to a question on my survey on how I'm going to treat the next thing. And right. event, eventually, we're going to hit a ending in the story of some like maybe not ending but a consequence where it's like you reap what you sow in a certain direction which right. will be i know that the way i say that sounds scary but it, it's no it's good because we've 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 talked about this plenty like we've asked for harder fights and you tried to do it but without like completely destroying us and we've had some good challenges i'd like to think so far and it's interesting because right now i think that me and ellie have kind of been the voice of reason for this arc that we're on which is no. play we're, we're, I'm not used to it. No. It, it is weird because half, it feels like half the team is like uh, murder hobos who also happen to love to roleplay, but then there's people, you know, we got a, a very different range of group than what we have here between the three of us as uh, players, because I think I'm pretty much like 100% I love roleplaying more than seeing the numbers. But that might be because I'm the DM. I'm used to, like, enjoying trying to, you know, set the scene or change it. And honestly, we haven't had enough battles to really see uh, how bloodthirsty we are as players. Or at least I haven't, anyways. I'm always itching for a fight, but anytime I know there's a fight going on, I'm always worried that I'm going to be, like, right in the middle of it as a squishy character. So it's like, I'm okay with just, you know, getting hit by a thrown dwarf in uh, this arm cannon <laughs> fucking maneuver. It's not I a life or death struggle for me. <laughs> I, I've always said I've always enjoyed lore much more well, for the aspect of uh, D&D, so I'm fine with a couple battles here and there, and um, obviously as we get further and further along, we're going to have more and more, but I am a-okay with setting up the lore of the world that we live in and the characters that we play at this point. I am too. That's why I said and watched the, uh, like, I like the, I, I'm probably like middle of the road. I like a good balance, and so far that balance has been... I've found that, like, I've been happy with that balance in both the campaigns I'm involved in. Um, like, I... You know I enjoy lore when I watch a fucking almost four-hour video on the lore of Destiny in the entire timeline, right? Uh, th there's a reason I sit and daydream about books that I used to read, because they've just built up the world so much that even after, like, the main story's done, like, you can only imagine what's happening with everything else. I imagine, when I think of Glenn's, uh, style of being a dungeon master is probably more, uh, serious. Like, I realize, I feel like my episode, uh, like, when I DM, I'm more of a kind of, like, magical Madoka, and for those who don't get the reference, it's like, la di da we're having fun and joking around, but suddenly, you know, somebody dies and we serious the fuck up, and it's like, oh, we, we should be serious here. But there's been times where I try to set up serious scenes, and everybody's, like, pulling out, you know, cigarettes and just kind of smoking <laughs> and waiting along. Like, there's one scene where I basically created major illusions of the entire uh, big bad evil group, so to speak. But since they couldn't kill them, they tried. They they immediately tried killing them. They're like, oh, we can't kill them. Oh, fuck it. Who cares what they're doing then? You know, they were just. Yeah, like, like my character started them. flirting with one of the other ones who happened to look like an elf. And then I just started chatting her up. And it's like, everybody's chill. And it was kind of freaky. But it's like, you know what? It's this group. If they're having fun, let them have fun chatting up. You know, it's weird because when it feels like with Glenn and. I initially was complaining to him about it. it feels like we're being railroaded because it's like, well, we're trying to, you know, sit here and have fun and do our thing for the sake of having a comedy D and D podcast. And, you know, it felt serious, but then it just felt like after a while, it's like, well, no, he's trying to present a uh, serious story plot, but he's not telling us we can't goof around. And in fact, like uh, if I really wanted to goof around is to say no and fuck off, I'm sure I could, but it just, right. I think it's more, if I do that, my character, and me to some extent, is worried that if I bugger off, Bull's like, peace, you know, you're, you're, you're gone <laughs> if you're not going to pull up your slack, and then Tyler rolls a new character. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, I... Th that's why, I, like, I've been feeling a lot of similarities with uh, how the Skyrim quest system is with, with our campaign. It's kind of like, oh, 
you, you need to decide on who to side with the civil war but you can do that after you own these three properties you become like the whatever the jarl of all of these different holes you save the kingdom from all these dragons then you Yo, can kind of decide White and settle Hall, okay i'm just saying that for the record <laughs> rebellion and, for the win. and it's and it's also, I think, because of the structure of the show that we're trying to do, because it's a little shorter, um, it's live action, we want to fit in as much story and an equal, like, a good amount of battle as well. So I think that's why it feels like it's a little bit um, um, limited, because he has to give us some sort of structure, and he's, like, letting us choose whether we want to follow it or not, but then we kind of have to, not because of him, but because of the fact that we're recording it and we're putting episodes out. Right, right. Oops. It's like uh, my phone was on uh, sound. Oh, Charter <laughs> Communications. Unprofessional. I know. It, this is a <laughs> I don't give a fuck podcast anyways. I unplugged the fish tank. They're dying right now. Yeah, my so furnace is end. off, so we're good. I can hear my family okay. freezing. <laughs> the chattering of their teeth. The bones become brittle as time goes on, so much so that when they step up, their knees shatter. You just go upstairs after you finally turn on the furnace and you see all of them like huddled under one blanket with like a, a small candle or something. <laughs> they can turn the oven on. It's fine. That is true. <laughs> you live in Ohio, so that, I mean, that might be like an alternative heat source for almost everybody down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm talking shit. What up? <laughs> but, uh, I've personally never heard of Ohio. Just didn't right. even know that existed. It's a flyby okay. state, so it's okay. We got a lot of corn. Hey, let's do something. Let's say, I wonder if Indiana, oh, who is a bigger, uh, I know we're about to derail, who's a bigger exporter of corn? Indiana, Michigan, or Ohio? Well, Michigan's export is soybeans. I know that. Okay. That's their you largest. You see a lot export. of fucking cornfields in Indiana, though. I wonder, like, yeah, I don't know I think about Ohio Indiana. Ohio has Ohio. more surface area, so um, I can tell you it's potatoes for Idaho. Yeah. Oh, um, really? Says the owl. But you know, I, can I make my joke real quick, guys? Come on. What, what, what <laughs> comes from Florida, Nick? What comes from what large orange fruit comes from Florida as a major Tangerines. export? You you do know that I'm not a North American native. So I'm learning things slowly about the continent. Tyler, how dare you attack me like this? I just came out to have a good time. I didn't grow up here. I was about to guess I'm something honestly that came very from, uh, from your native country, but then I realized... It's beef. Oh, is it really? say spices. But yeah, is that, no, that's like your primary exports? Of, yeah, India is one of the biggest exporters of beef in the world. Hmm. Never Which is kind of weird because... Yep. Okay, just make it... Like, I, I stopped myself in case I, I was like, is that ignorant? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but thank you for the confirmation, Nick. Oh, um, Brandon, it. you had a joke? Yeah, yeah. No, I have a no joke. joke. So, I was... Depending on uh, whether Ohio or Indiana is uh, the larger exporter of corn, you'd be able to call one of the two uh, the corn hub. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I do believe that Michigan is the greatest exporter of uh, university football losses, though. So, I mean, we got that going on. There. Yeah. That's self deprecating to bring you up. To bring me? Yeah, I mean, we're we're undefeated this season as the Buckeyes, so you know you uh, do whatever oh, you want. <laughs> no, I, I was saying that we lose too much, but I, I was start, I was trying to say that we give. Well, I guess when I say we we give out defeats, it means we're undefeated or some shit. But I meant the opposite. Anyways, uh, I think that's gonna be it. Unless we want to say anything else, just uh, give a shout out. Uh, is there anything that no. we're excited for with uh, the this uh, D and D campaign? Um, I'm talking to Glenn. Uh, because I, I don't know if we mentioned it on air or not. Glenn, again, is very much about the narrative, and I had a multi-class idea, which I've shared with you guys, but I need to figure out if that would work narratively. And so I'm just really excited to figure that out because I'm trying to like I'm trying to play a, a melee-based Goliath, and for me to do big numbers is what I want to do. And so I'm like, let's let's try and do that. And so yeah, no, that's you know I'm just excited. It's my second campaign, and it's gone good. I think I've been enjoying it. And I'm yeah. proud of you because I went for the better ask for forgiveness than permission thing with the whole uh, setting up the you know multi classes warlock poten uh, potentially because <laughs> like everybody's like why does he keep talking to a dagger why why is this dagger so important and then I just say after one episode like oh yeah he's uh, he's probably chatting up the uh, raven you know the raven queen. That's so raven, and you know, Glenn's like, "What?" It's so raven. I'm enjoying it. Anyway. I'm glad. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to us heading north. I'm right. waiting to see the evolution of your arm. I'm excited for the day that happens. Like he Gotta comes up double again. jointed with with. Oh, is every level up? That that's what we decided. It was going to be every session, but then it was like, well, we'll do every level up. Um, we just stay in Neverwinter for two weeks, and before you know it, you can like bend inwards and stuff like that. Like. In so many different directions, you got. I'm excited. Uh, like 
an extra five fingers on your forearm so you can grab a second weapon. You just fucking zed somebody. I'm hoping to uh, eventually get a sword that I can just attach to it, uh, similar to what Vol was talking about. But I would need somebody to uh, teach me some swordsman skills. Mm, if only we had somebody who was trained in swords. If only. Don't worry. Once I hit Warlock, I'll be set to train you. Yeah, you definitely want to be trained by the by the changeling who can't hit any of his fireballs. Oh, uh, the scene where you were shooting lightning and missing everybody, it uh, <laughs> made me think... Have thunder, you either of you specifically. Seen... I want to Sorry. see thunder. Have either of you the seen thunder, uh, Shazam? Thunder? No. This, no. There's a scene where he's on top... He can shoot lightning, of course. That's part of his shtick. There's a scene where he's on top of where uh, Rocky does his uh, montage run at the top. And right. he's going there and he goes, Hands... Lightning from my hands, and he's shooting lightning out just everywhere, and that's all I could think of during that scene. <laughs> Roger's just showing off, because he can. It's like somebody popping out of cover with a fully loaded gun and just blindly firing and then missing every shot at point-blank range. It's a warning shot. I don't make fun of you with how you did in your first fight there, Vol. You can. Nobody said you couldn't. <laughs> I know. I fucking jumped off a horse <laughs> and smashed a guy in half. What'd you guys do? I survived being surrounded by four people long enough for you guys to help me. And I tried talking to <laughs> Crazy Dave and could not get any roleplay whatsoever out of him until uh, we, I it's think funny. him and I agreed that littering was good at one point and we kind of like made a connection. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I give you enough shit without bringing up uh, our our fights. So much shit. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. I think that's going to be it. Uh, unless right. we got any other good stories we want to ramble on. My ass Maybe, hurts. I could get, I was gonna say I, okay. I was gonna say uh, something, <laughs> but I'll cut it off then. So uh, you can find me on Twitter at two times Tyler. All letters, one word. Two times Tyler. You can find me on Twitter at l r the eleventh. L r t h e e l e v e n t h. Spell it out, motherfuckers. You can find you can find oh Brandon where? Uh, Glenn Houston spelled like Huston. Okay, yeah, Glenn Huston. That right? Is that uh, how it says it? Yep. Uh, how, right. where can we find you, Glenn? Uh, at Zigzagoon, I have a total of zero posts. Get, yes, you and do. you're not even following all of the CMQ team. I'll get on it after this. I'll post my first post after this recording. Just for our sake, could you spell out Zigzagoon? That way they're not trying to spell it like the Pokemon? Sure. It's a mix of the League Champion and the Pokemon. It's Z-I-G-G-S-A-G-O-O-N. So Ziggs, which is Z-I-G-G-S, and then yep. uh... And yep. then Goon, as in Goonies. Goon, as in Goon okay. Squad. Right, so, like, I noticed, like, there's times where I listen to a podcast and they'll say, they're, you know, hey, uh, let's say my name real quick, and it's like, how do you fucking spell that? <laughs> say my name, say my name. Uh, we are a part of Casual Master Quest, a podcast network dedicated to giving you the video game news and tropes you deserve. You can find the show everywhere you can Google and on Twitter at MasterQuestPod. Glenn, our uh, beloved host, happy anniversary to him and his wife, is a part of a sister D&D show called Ready to Roll, where you can find more of his and other talented players as they continue their quest in the Forgotten Archipelago. That was Nick. That was Brandon. Where's Glenn? And this is Tyler. We will see you next week with another session of Casual Quest Masters, and don't forget to never stop the quest. Bye-bye! Bye. Bye, I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. I was kind of hoping Glenn th- would just, like, show up right as we were exiting and just go, bye-bye! <laughs> hey, guys, uh, roll for recap. 